Right, so um, uh, Walter started by saying that Orbis is not a map, but Pleiades is not a map either. Um, I'm often asked, well, is it an online geographic information system or GIS? The answer to that, too, is no. Uh, it is an information system, and it is about geography, but a lot of the things that you're used to on desktop GIS systems, like complex spatial algebra, all that sort of good stuff, we don't do. Um, we are about a lot of other things, though. What are we about? Well, in terms of our online presence, one of the main things we are is a website where scholars and students and uh, enthusiasts from around the world can come together to get and use and create and share uh, geographic information about the ancient world. And yes, do some mapping. Um, you can also think of Pleiades as a data set that has names and locations and the relationships between these indicia. Um, if you like gazetteers, you're welcome to think of Pleiades as a gazetteer, uh, which matches names, locations, and descriptions of the same. Uh, you can think of Pleiades as a graph, which is concerned about connections between geographic and extra geographic entities of interest. You can also think of Pleiades as a continuously published journal of micro-contributions in uh, ancient geography, and one that combines uh, both crowdsourcing and traditional editorial models. More about that when we talk about sustainability. And if you're running another system, or a digital library, or wanting to do geocoding, something geoparsing of texts, you can think of Pleiades as a growing authority list for ancient geography. Uh, not just names, but the identities of the places themselves. Um, there's the footprints, spatially. Um, we're sneaking up on 35,000 places cataloged. These are places and spaces in the ancient world, primarily Greek and Roman, but edging into more Byzantine. Uh, we have a big data set coming for the ancient Near East, um, so um, spreading out. So what does all this content look like to humans who have web browsers. Well, our basic component is a place. It's a conceptual construct that uh, includes names, and descriptions, and locations on the Earth's surface that have some kind of coherence together. That's what makes a place. You can think of them as associations of names, locations, identity, and description in time. And our approach admits ranges of uncertainty, Ranges of accuracy and precision in measurement, questions of textual transmission, certainty and association between name and place, and so on. But the key thing, the key thing that holds all Pleiades together and I hope makes it useful to you, is the Uniform Resource Identifier, or URI. We assign a non-changing numeric identifier that makes sense on the web, that's useful on the web, to each of these bundles of names, locations, and identities so that you have a handle on the web for referring to it. This is how we disambiguate between the 20 or 30 some Alexandrias that we know of from the ancient world. Name is not our organizing principle. And this is something that people who come to this from the standard use of gazetteers in, the, in classical scholarship or other places can get hung up on. Don't think that names organize Pleiades. Names are simply attributes of these places we are interested in. The thing that identifies them is the URI. We also have titles, or we can think of it as labels for the places, distinct from the individual historical names. We have a description that's primarily meant to help you disambiguate as a human what you're looking at. Um, which Alexandria is this? The one in Egypt or someone, someone way off in the middle of Turkey somewhere? Interpretive categorization. Uh, locations rendered in a list and on a map when possible, so these are the actual either measurable or estimatable locations on the ground, as distinct from the cognitive idea of place that we're using to bundle them together with names. Connections with other places, citations of additional and supporting literature, sources, and other data sets, and we also, uh, to some degree, talk about data we don't hold, and I'll come to that in a minute, but that's what that right-hand sidebar is partly about. Well, here's the model in abstract. It's that simple. You got locations, you got names, they go together, that's a place. Got more than one place. Let's build one up briefly. Um, let's suppose that in a relatively uh, close area, we have excavated 
a Mithraeum, a circus, and an amphitheater, we're confident saying that this is enough evidence to say we have an ancient settlement here. We can date them on archaeological criteria and so on. So that's enough, uh, given, given the dating and the identity of them, to call it a place in the Pleiades view of the world. <clears throat> we're going to give it the uniform resource identifier. That's the number that comes at the end of it. That's never going to change even if we decide that the excavation team was drunk and that's not a Mithraeum. It's in fact a bomb shelter from the Second World War. <laughs> well, it turns out uh, that uh, we have a place name associated with the modern location where we found this stuff, Merida in Spain, so we can tack that name on as the present name, and ancient sources will tell us that this is a Merida Augusta. <clears throat> If we had a name on an inscription that we weren't sure was in situ, that might have something to do with the site, we could tentatively associate it with the place. We uh, can attenuate our data in that way. And that's uh, how we build up a place. We can also graph, mark them, relationships between places in this way. So there's our amphitheater, our circus, and our Mithraina. And they're all part of the star now, which represents our place, which is the Merit Augusta. It's binding them together along with the names. But we can also have connections between them. So the Lago di Prosopina, which is a reservoir that uh, was created by the construction of a Roman dam, which fed uh, ancient uh, Merit Augusta via what we call today the Aqueducto de los Milagros, um, which if You've seen pictures of Merida or have been there. You know, this is the big elevated aqueduct bridge that comes into the city. But in fact, the aqueduct goes on up north from there to the reservoir, where the dam is still in place holding water, in fact. And Merida Augusta can be thought of as being part of Hispania. So we, we have this graph of connections between places. Can you have this data? Yes, you can. It is all open. Um, it's all governed under uh, Creative Commons licensing. And the only question is, how do you get it? Well, <clears throat> we have several serialization formats. And since this is a crowd that's not afraid of tech, we've already seen Jason this morning. I'm going to show you some of them. You've seen in the, in the graphics I've shown you the HTML. That's human consumed in the browser. But in fact, we have several other formats here. Um, I won't uh, bother to show you the Atom plus GORSS. This is a web feed format. It's, uh, it's meant so that programmers can grab up the data and reuse it in a, in a structured way uh, online. But what I will show you is another format used for that purpose. Again, uh, JSON. Yeah, it's just chucked me out of my dual monitors, dual monitor mode because PowerPoint doesn't play well with others. I apologize. Should have tested that. <laughs> like the Easter Bunny. <laughs> right. So we'll take uh, we'll take uh, this nifty site in uh, Africa as our example, and um, if you scroll down the page, you're a happy human user. One of the first things you might notice on some of our pages is that we have photos. Um, we'll come back to those, but. Uh, well, then we'll do them first. Um, you can click through these and go to Flickr and find a whole list of photos from Duga contributed uh, not only by um, uh, my colleagues at ISAW, but other people as well. And these are not being manually linked to Pleiades. Nobody is going in Pleiades and saying, I want to link to this Flickr photo, I want to link to that Flickr photo. What's happening is users on Flickr are, are tagging them with that Pleiades identifier I was telling you about. And then we use the existing Flickr API to grab that information out and tell you there's 74 photos of Duga in there. Um, Pleiad, uh, uh, Flickr got so interested in this that they actually um, spent you know, some amount of programmers' time to create links back. So when they see a Pleiades, uh, what they call machine tag, they will go out, hit Pleiades, grab that Adam uh, file I was telling you about, read off the title, and build a link like this to fix the ancient site, the Gatoka. So there's a little bit of a kind of graph emerging there between Flickr. I think there are about 3,500 uh, Flickr photos now tagged with Pleiades IDs. 
although we picked up several more just the other day. There's some other formats that you can get to directly down the page right in here. There's your atom. JSON, which we already saw before. That's its compressed format. Here it is made pretty. Again, this is a format that's widely used in web application programming. It's structured in a way that makes it easy in a web application live to grab and manipulate and reuse the data. That's why we expose it. So if a third party wants to link up with Pleiades and do nifty stuff with our data, they can without having to download it. We also have KML for Google Earth, um, which I won't bother to uh, uh, show to you because you get essentially the same view in Google Earth that you do here with the, where you can interrogate the accuracy with which these points have been placed. Um, <clears throat> and for linked data purposes and semantic web purposes, we provide the resource description framework in a couple of different flavors. This is the turtle syntax for RDF, which is basically everything you see on that HTML page, but serialized for reuse by computational agents that are trying to determine relationships between materials on the web and uh, between things that are represented on the web. So all of our citations of other uh, resources on the web are included in here. Here's our citation system. We have all the names, the credit for who did the work, linked up with uh, identities on the web where that's possible. <coughs> Textual. So the idea is to give this stuff out in as many formats as we can, make it useful for other people, and to facilitate cross-linking between projects, which is where we're going to go here in a minute in terms of discussion. <clears throat> I want to briefly mention a page that has disappeared, which is the Pelagios Project. How many people here know about the Pelagios Project? Okay, about half. Um, I'd encourage you to go have a look at their website. Uh, if you Google Pelagios Project, you will not fail to find them. Um, this is a, a group of folks led by Elton Barker uh, of the Open University, Lee Isaacson, Isaacson at the uh, University of Southampton, and uh, Rainer Simon in Austria, who said, oh, well, Pleiades has you know, 30,000 uh, ancient place IDs. Maybe we could start having projects that care about geography hold their IDs and surface some metadata that would make it possible for us to do cross-discovery, right? So we can link all this stuff together. And that's exactly what they've done. If you uh, go back to our Pleiades page, we have a sidebar that is talking to uh, the Pelagius server and asking you about this data from partners and providing links. So here is the Arachne database of the German Archaeological Institute. They have, uh, is that 14 or 100? Uh, 14 items in their database that they claim are related to the site of Pluga, and they do that by publishing data that says it's related to this Pleiades ID. And they use that same link data format I was showing you a minute ago. Um, so here you are starting to get into the collection of the DAI with, with uh, reference to this site. Uh, there are about uh, 30, I think, active participants in Pelagius now, including Perseus, uh, and Ryan and I will talk about that some more in a minute. And what I'd like to do now is set the stage for him to come up and talk about something new and more interesting. Uh, so let me find PowerPoint again. I'm going to assume that everybody in this room knows how to go to a website and find a search box and look for stuff, and that maybe if you want to do something sophisticated, you look for an advanced search. Okay. You got it. If you want all the data instead of onesies off the Fuga page and every other page, you can get it all in a big pot. Go to our downloads page. Grab it there. Several different formats. A brief uh, advertisement where this uh, data came from and why. Well, there was the Barrington Atlas of the Greek and Roman world and a concern to get its data to people on the web who wanted to use it in ways other than on a coffee table or a big library book stand. And uh, both the Pleiades Project and a project at Harvard uh, directed by Michael McCormick called the Digital Atlas of Roman and Medieval Civilization uh, set out to go about doing that. 
And we found out about each other and started collaborating and got all the data converted and loaded uh, into our various systems and being shared with these folks. In the case of Pleiades, from the beginning, we had the idea that we'd then be harvesting their reactions and knowledge back into the system for future use. Meantime, uh, the Integral Mapping Center, Chapel Hill, which is where Pleiades was born and is still a partner, was thinking of other kinds of ways and, uh, uh, to serve that same body of people out there on the web who wanted to do things with ancient geography and mapping that Pleiades wasn't doing. And so what I'd like to do is invite Ryan to come up and talk a bit about um, what the Integral Mapping Center is doing uh, with Pleiades data and with their own data. And then we'll come back and talk about the big world around this. Thing.